I have um, a molecule on the end of my finger, an air molecule, and I create a disturbance over here that goes bang. We turn it sideways, and now we unwrap the thing so we can look at a two-dimensional version of it. If we were just measuring these two right now, how would you know how much delay is on here? How would you know the difference between these if you were just measuring this in the field? If you're just using a single channel measurement, everything looks like an EQ problem. More time, time of flight changes, more delay, steeper slope. Um, how do I convert meters to milliseconds though? I didn't do any kind of fancy uh, interpretation of the phase graph, right? All I did was measure the distance offset, convert the time, and it worked out. That's not gonna work every time. So not only does this pattern change as displacement changes, as physical offset changes, but we're also gonna see that it changes with frequency. This is probably why you guys are here. You wanna know how to interpret the phase graph quickly, make decisions quickly without having a PhD, right? And the way we're gonna do that is by learning to identify some chips, blah, some shapes. This on time portion, wherever the graph kind of flattens out, that is exactly where the delay locator has locked onto, this peak here, right? There we go. So we just aligned two speakers from two different manufacturers just with delay. How do I know that I have proper data? I don't know, maybe this is correct. Maybe this is what it's supposed to look like. Half of this graph is half, right? So if I know one full period is eight milliseconds, then half a period must be four milliseconds. So let's talk about how we might solve this and see if we can find some better variations.